Notice in today's gospel reading how our Lord says, if anyone uh, strikes you on the cheek, turn the other also. In other words, be willing to accept evil committed against you. And this goes so against our human nature. In other words, we don't want to be hurt. We don't want to be physically hurt. We don't want to be psychologically hurt. We don't want to be offended. So it goes against our very nature. And yet this is what our Lord is telling us to do. And it's not an easy thing to do. Now notice how he begins by saying, you know, you have heard that it was said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But he says, don't resist the evildoer. And when we consider this passage, it's important that we understand it in the context of everything else, because our Lord also says to speak out against injustice. So in other words, take a situation, you know, a man and woman are married and the husband is abusing the wife, maybe just verbally, maybe physically, who knows, in some way, should she just put up with it without doing anything? And the answer is no. In other words, she has to oppose that injustice. But what our Lord is getting at is that, you know, on certain occasions um, that are just one-time events, somebody might offend us in one way or another, and we should just let that go. But if it's something that's an ongoing abuse, something that's an ongoing problem, then it's an injustice that we need to speak out against. It's an injustice that we need to try to oppose. So we need to understand it in context. But yes, people believe this principle. And what's interesting is that even today, many people live by a very similar principle. So this principle, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, it's almost like saying, well, it's okay if somebody punches you in the face and knocks out a tooth, well, you have a right to punch them back and knock out one of their teeth. Kind of makes sense, right? But and, and in fact, when we consider where our Lord says, you know, love your neighbor as yourself, or, or that principle, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, well, it's, it's actually similar to that. If someone punches you on, in the face, do unto others as they do unto you, right? It's, it's, it's not quite the same because we want them to do unto us as we would like them to, not the way that they want to. So it was kind of a principle to allow people to commit evil, but it also limited the evil. So in other words, if somebody punches me in the face, knocks out a tooth, and I punch them back, what if I knock out two teeth? That means they have a right to punch me back again. And what if they talk, knock out more teeth? And it just goes back and forth. And you see, when people are in this frame of mind of, of seeking vengeance, of trying to punish the the offender, then they're really breeding evil. And we can see this evil going back and forth and never ending. And basically what our Lord is saying by turning the other cheek or just sometimes overlooking certain evils committed against us, he's saying, well, that's how we put an end to evil. But if we don't have that attitude and we desire vengeance, then evil perpetuates. And an interesting thing is, you know, Sometimes somebody is offended by someone or hurt by someone, and the person carries around that anger within them towards the person that hurt them. But in reality, they end up manifesting their anger towards the people they care about. Not the person that hurt them, but the people that they care about. In other words, when we carry around evil within us, it's going to affect us. It's going to affect our relationships. And our Lord is saying, don't do this. Don't allow evil to dwell within your heart. Our heart should be filled with love, including for those who offend us. So why is it that we have this tendency to, to seek vengeance, to, to want to pay back people who have hurt us, to, to, uh, to hold on to anger and, and all these terrible things? And part of it is because we have a sense of our dignity as human beings, the sense that we are created in the image of God. We're not just an animal, we're not just biological processes, but we have an immortal soul created for all eternity. We are created in the image of God. 
So we sense this dignity. So when someone offends us, we, we see that this is a huge offense. And in many ways it is. So no one should offend anyone. That's the reality. But when we are offended, we see this tremendous injustice being done. And we feel that we have a right to make things right, to bring about justice. So we appoint our, ourselves a, as the judge and as the, as the executor of the punishment. So in other words, we need to get back at the person. So even today, as I mentioned, people kind of live by this principle, not so much a, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but if he hurt me, I'm going to hurt him back. doesn't matter how. It might be in a different way, but I'm going to hurt him back. This desire for vengeance and some people sometimes are so angry that they actually fantasize about actually killing the person who offended them. And for just slight reasons sometimes. So it's very unfortunate that we allow such evil to rise up within us and to dwell within us. Now here's, here's something that's very interesting and I want to point out to you is we all understand that when we are friend, offended, uh, or hurt in some way, our natural reaction is to be angry and sometimes to be even vengeful, to want to hurt back. We recognize this great injustice that is done. That's regarding ourselves. But when we see others being treated unjustly, it's like we don't care. I'm not saying everyone, but a lot of people have that attitude. I mean, think, for example, of, of the, the abortion issue. So these innocent children in the womb who are being slaughtered through abortion, do we care? Do we recognize this injustice that is being done? And it's not just the aborted child, but a lot of women who are pressured into having abortion. And a lot of women suffer the psychological problems of having had an abortion. But society doesn't seem to care. Many Catholics don't seem to care. Many Christians don't seem to care. So something horrible happened to these women and, and they're, they're suffering, but we don't care. So great injustice was done. They participated in a great injustice. They're suffering the consequences of it and we don't seem to care. So yes, when on television people see, you know, people starving in third world countries, we're motivated to help them. But sometimes the things that we cannot see, the evils that we cannot see, sometimes those evils are far greater but we're so good at just dismissing it and not worrying about it and just going on with our own lives. So in other words, if we are truly, if we are called to love, if we truly love, then we will care and we will speak out against injustice and do what we can to oppose these injustices in society. And there's so many other injustices also. I mean, even the legalization of marijuana. It's obvious that drug use is going to have a negative impact on the individuals that use it, and it's going to affect their relationships in a negative way. Do we care? If we cared, if all of us cared, we would do something, or we would elect different politicians who are, you know, more, who really care about people instead of all, allowing all these unjust things to take place in society, or the sexualization of children. We could go on and on. In today's missalet, or in the, in the missalet, the people's missalet that some of you have, there's a beautiful quotation from St. Augustine. And I can't remember it exactly, but I'll try to do the best that I can. And he says that unforgiveness is a poison that we drink, hoping that the unforgiven will die. And I wanted to draw your attention to that and, and, and to kind of meditate on that. It, it's, you know, the saints have these maxims, these sayings that are very profound and they contain a lot of information. They're good principles to apply to our own lives. But I wouldn't say what St. Augustine said. Now, of course, I'm not a St. Augustine. But I personally would have said, if you hold on to anger and resentment, then that's a poison that you drink hoping that the person you hate will die. But instead, you're drinking that poison. You're the one who's going to die. But you see, here's the difference between what I said and what St. Augustine said. What I'm referring to is this positive evil of holding on to anger and resentment. You're actually 
hating someone. And we all recognize that that's evil. So what I said makes perfect sense, right? But what St. Augustine is saying, maybe you're not angry. Maybe you have no resentment. Maybe you have no desire for vengeance. But you simply forgive, refuse to forgive. So in other words, it's a sin of omission, a sin of failing to do the good that you ought to do. And simply forgiving to forgive is the poison that you drink, hoping that the person that you are not willing to forgive will die instead of you. But you see, when we hold on to evil, we're dying. Because evil is a poison, no matter which way we think about it. And it eats away at us. And evil, any, any hatred that we hold on to, it prevents us from having the love of God, having the fullness of the love of God within us. And this is something so serious, our Lord talks about it again and again in the Gospels. If we do not forgive, we cannot be forgiven. It's so, so serious. And so this is something we should really take to heart and, and meditate on. You know, do I hold on to hatred or resentment or a desire for vengeance? And also, am I unwilling to forgive? So these might be things that we need to work on to try to grow in the spiritual life and become the kind of person that God calls us to be. So yes, let us put an end to evil in our relationships with others, but also let us put an end to the evil that dwells within our own hearts.